Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So, as the title says below, this is going to be my January book haul, and I surprisingly don't have that many books. I think I'm missing three books. Um, but they are in the mail on the way to me. So as I'm recording this, it is currently January 29th, Wednesday. Um, so if I do get any other books before the 1st of February, I will just add on a clip at the end of this video, pretty much. But, um, if not, then you'll see those in my February book haul. But, um, I am waiting on three nonfiction books that I know of, for sure. Um, but yeah, I have... Three books here, two fictional books that were sent to me for review, one book that I purchased myself, and then I got some stuff for my son. I haven't had anything from Our Daily Bread or Joyce Meyer in a minute, only because I have a stack of things that need to go out into the mail, but I just don't have any stamps. So hopefully they still have those items in stock when I send the, the mail in to them, But um, and I just haven't found anything on Joyce Meyer's. Um, two things before I begin. One, you may hear the smoke detector. I mentioned this in my Where I've Been update, What's Been Going On video. Um, there was a small incident in my house beginning of January, and now the smoke detector in my room, my mother's room, and upstairs in the apartment above us freaks out. Um, normally I can reset it, but as you can hear, for some reason when I try to reset mine, it makes this, like, weird... It's not even a sound. Like, it... I don't know. It sounds like the battery's dying, but then it just double beeps and continues to beep so i'm gonna try to figure that out um we'll, we'll figure that out somehow but i'm not gonna stop that from making stop make that stop me from making videos and um second thing i am still sick um so i mentioned in that video how i got sick well because we ended our fast uh, my church as a whole ended the fast on sunday but because my mother and i started a day late we ended ours on monday um <laughs> Your girl got sick again, like, two days before the fast ended, which I, the enemy is real mad. Um, and some other stuff went on, and I didn't mention everything in that video, but there was a lot more other, a lot more. That's not English. There were a ton of other things that happened, so we just gonna, we, we just gonna keep pushing, and yeah. So, with this, I do have another thing to share with you guys, but I'm probably just gonna do a separate unboxing for that, so let's get into this haul um so the first item i got is from b h kids um i didn't see a lot of things that i wanted from b h this month for review they did have three other items that were for adults um one item did stick out to me but i really had to weigh my options of if i wanted it because i was definitely going to read it or if i wanted it because it sounded good and I'm definitely realizing that I have way too many goddamn books. Um, excuse my language if some of you don't like the word damn. But, um, I have way too many books. And I need to stop on all accounts on when it comes to reviewing Christian books as well as my secular books. I just, I need to put pump the brakes on it. So, I only went with one and it's a Christian book for my son. Um, and it's called What's So Wonderful About Webster. It is by Stephen and Alex Kendrick. Illustrated by Daniel Fernandez, and it is inspired by the film Overcomer. Now, I have not seen Overcomer yet. I know. I need to get with it. But I may just wait until we buy the DVD, because we basically have all of their DVDs. Um, I just, I love the Kendrick Brothers. Um, they wrote War Room. They produced it and acted in it. Um, they wrote a bunch of other movies. I don't know if you've ever seen Fireproof. <sighs> I'm gonna do a whole video on like my favorite Christian movies because I really I didn't know about them until War Room came out and then I was like oh my god I didn't know they made Fireproof and I had watched Fireproof years ago um but yeah I digress Overcomer is a movie that they came out with a couple months ago I can't remember when um but it came out I think last year and they do have a book that comes like there is an actual book to this uh, like a fictional book that you can read which I want to get my hands on I see it all the time in Walmart and never buy it and then when I wanted to buy it it wasn't in Walmart sorry if I'm sounding a little weird like I said I'm I'm still a little sick and um it's hard to sort of breathe but I did not want to make videos for you guys you're probably not going to see this video for a minute because I have thousands of other videos like reading blogs and stuff going up but we have this and it looks so sing cute first of all he's a black boy i'm here for it he's black okay um and then you got 
the cute little glasses. The little, just a little nerdy little boy, and I think it's so cute. So, yeah. Um, I don't know what it's about. It says, Webster isn't feeling so wonderful. It's almost field day, and Webster is worried. He always trips on the jump rope, and his egg race skills just make a mess. How would he help his class get the medal? He sure God forgot to make anything special about him. I'm sorry. That was like, oh. He sure God forgot to make anything special about him. Join Webster and his friends as the whistle blows and he discovers a few God-given skills that might save the field day. Young readers will cheer along as they're reminded that they too were each wonderfully made by God. So, I'm here for it. I know that um, Priscilla Shire wrote Radiant, which is like a, a young woman's book based on the movie Overcomer. And I think she has another book written for adults based on Overcomer, which I do want to get both. But, um... We have this gorgeous book, and we haven't read it yet. Actually, let me take the dust jacket off. I love when, you know what I think? I think, I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm just looking at my phone so I could make sure it's on vibrate because I don't want it to ring or anything. Put it on silent because my son's father might call me any second. Um, But, uh, oh, I didn't even know that there was, like, information on the inside flap. Mm. I'm going to read the information on the inside flap then make my comment that I was going to make. So it says, <laughs> Will Phil Day really be the worst day of Webster's life? That's what he expects. He failed at all the events and is convinced that God didn't make him good at anything. But Phil Day proves that Webster is more wonderful and more loved than he thought. The companion book to the movie Overcomer will encourage young readers to realize we are each unique and wonderfully made by God. And um, it has Psalms 139.14, which is, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, we already know about, you know, the Kendrick Brothers, so we don't even need to read that. But, yes. Okay, so what I was going to say is, I love when, I find this a lot with middle grade and children's books, is that they have dust jackets, but their hardcovers are like, printed on like the artwork from the dust jacket is printed on i think um adult novels and other like ya books need to start doing that just saying i notice a lot of middle grade and children books do that but um yes this looks like it's going to be so fun so i'm excited for that personally i'm excited to read it but i know my son is too and he's a black boy just saying on the cover all right so the next Four items you guys saw if you saw the unboxing I did for the CKBB, which is the Christian Kids Book Box. Brain fart for a second. But, um, yeah. So these are the items over there. So we got this um, art project, which is a sign craft kit that he still hasn't done yet. He wants to do it. We're probably going to do it next weekend. So we have that. Um, then he has the Bible Alphabet Activities for Kids by Shiloh Kids. Um, this is something I'm definitely interested in doing with him because, um, we need to learn about the alphabets and the vowels and all that. And I love that they incorporate the word of God. Like each alphabet has, um, a scripture attached to it as well as a word from the Bible, which is a plus. So we have that. Then he got God Gave Us Family by Lisa Tom Bergen. Again, my son already does own this book. Um, so I will be passing this book along to one of the younger girls at my church who's about the same age as him. I think she's five. My son is going on six. So I'm going to pass this book on to her because hopefully she'll enjoy it and she does like to read books. So we have that. The last book that I got for my son is the Look and Tell Bible. Um, it's the Hear the Story, See the Picture, and Say It Yourself. This is from... Thomas Nelson, um, they call it Tommy Nelson, which is so cute, but this is basically sort of like a devotional Bible, but what happens is they give you these pictures that your children can, like, name so that they know these are animals, the moon, the earth, Eve, Adam, plants, sun, stars, and then as you're reading, when the picture pops up, they'll know the word so that they can begin to learn to read the word of God for themselves, which I think is cute. So, we're definitely going to put some use to this. We haven't yet because things have been crazy, but yeah. Alright. So, that is that. So, on to the books that I got. So, I got three books. Three. One already read. But the first book I purchased myself, which I am so, so excited to finally, finally own. You, you guys do not understand. Okay? I've been wanting this book for forever. I have it on ebook, but every time I try to read the ebook, it just, I zone out, and I knew that I needed the physical copy. I ended up buying two copies of this book, one for me and one for my mother, because we both wanted to read that, and it is The Weight. I've been waiting to read, I've been waiting to read The Weight for, like, forever. When it came out, I had to wait a year, got the ebook, and since then, I've been trying to read the ebook. Um, this book came out in... 2016 it's 2020 you guys four years 
So technically, it came out four years ago, but I've been waiting three years to read this book because I've owned it now for three years on ebook. Yes, but it's by Devon Franklin and Megan Good, um, and it features Tim Bend. I don't, I don't know who that guy is, but it's a powerful practice for finding the love of your life and the life you love. Um, and I just, I love Devon Franklin, um, and who he is. Um, he is a Christian, and I love everything that he does. Um, Megan Good, we all, if you don't know who Megan Good is, I don't know who you are, but, like, she's, she was a well-known, um, video girl and an actress, um, and she definitely changed her life for the better, um, I don't know if she's always known about God, I don't really know, like, her full faith story, but I know that when she met Devon, she grew in her relationship with the Lord, and, um, just the way they had their relationship is inspiring to me, and I've been wanting to read this for years, so finally got it, we'll be reading this in February, can't wait, but, um, yes, I have this book, and I'll quickly read the back of it for you guys, so it says, in the wait, Devon and Megan share the life-changing message that waiting rather than rushing can be the key for finding the person you're meant to be with. Filled with candid his and hers accounts of the most important moments of their relationship, along with practical advice on how waiting can transform your entire your life by giving you greater patience, joy, peace, healing, faith, and love. The Wait offers specific real-time advice for men and women trying to successfully navigate the ins and outs of dating, love, and relationships. You'll experience firsthand the power of what happens when you put sex on the shelf, work on becoming the best version of yourself, and allow God to bring his vision for your life to fruition. So, I'm excited. They got married um, in the summer of 2012, so they've been married for a long time now, um, and I'm excited to finally just dive into this book, I, I, I can't wait, the excitement is, like, killing me, so we have this. Alright guys, sorry about that, um, I got a phone call from one of the elders from my church, so I had to answer that, but we are going to now move on to the two fictional books that were sent to me for review. Before I do that, I gotta take a sip of my tea, y'all know what tea I'm drinking. Y'all know, do, do y'all know what tea I'm drinking? Mm, Bigelow pumpkin spice with pumpkin spice creamer. <laughs> yes, um, we need we need an ours. I got this mug maybe a year or two years ago from Marshalls. Um, I find that Marshalls has like really cute mugs, and they're always like less than five dollars. So anytime I go to Marshalls, I try to buy two mugs, but I have a mug collection that's like growing excessively. So yeah, but. I should be drinking water. Is this my water? I think this is my water bottle. I have water here too. But, um, okay. So, the first book I received is from Bethany House. I read this. Gave it a 4.5 star rating. Um, feels. But it is a Rachel Dillon's Endgame. This is the first book in the Capital Intrigue. I think it is. Yes. The first book in the Capital Intrigue trilogy. But it might be a series. Not sure. But, um, if you are a fan of NCIS, the TV show. You will love this, okay? You will definitely love this. This definitely gives off the NTIS feels because we know that the NTIS really deals with a lot of, like, the Navy and the Army and the military guys and stuff like that. So this really goes heavy. And it basically deals with, like, a sniper-type dude um, and, like, false accusations. And I'm, I'm just... I, let's read it back. So it says, Each new clue, every crime scene, brings them closer to discovering the end game. When elite members of the military are murdered on the streets of Washington, D.C., FBI Special Agent Bailey Ryan, excuse me, and NTIS Special Agent Marco Augustina, I don't, I don't know how to say his name, so I just say Marco, I just call him by his first name. So his name would be on the screen, but Augustina, I don't know, um, must work together to bring the perpetrator to justice. Unfortunately, all evidence points to a Navy SEAL sniper who Bailey refuses to believe is guilty. When Bailey and Marco start to connect the dots between the victims, they wonder if there's a deeper cover-up at play. After Bailey is targeted, it becomes clear that someone is willing to kill and keep their dark secrets. With the stakes getting higher by the moment, Bailey and Marco rush against the clock to determine who they can really trust in this twisted conspiracy. As allies turn to enemies, the biggest secret yet to be discovered could be the end of them all. So, I definitely, definitely enjoyed this. My only thing why I can't give it a full five stars is because it dragged out. But, we'll talk about my feels in the, in the, in the wrap-up that's gonna come out. But, this, this was good. So, if you love NCIS, which I'm a fan of NCIS, um, Law & Order, SVU, SVU? Yeah, SUV, SVU. I always get that confused. Um, Blue Bloods, like, TV shows like that, I really, really enjoy watching. Um, Criminal Minds, this, that's, that's me. That That's me right there, okay? So, this was good. 
So let's move on to the last book. All right, in the last book, <laughs> I think was my most anticipated read, like legit, my most anticipated read for 2020. And I read it, I read the ebook um, in December and my reading vlog is coming next week, actually. Next week, um, well, I'm saying next week because, like I said, I'm recording some 29th. But by the time you see this video, my reading vlog may already be up. <laughs> but if it is, just click the eye screen or go to that. But that is for my beloved favorite biblical fiction author ever. Like, uh, the smiles because I just, I can't control. Just, just a moment of silence. Just... the eighth novel the eighth the eighth novel you guys from miss tessa afshar there are no words to describe my feels um the way i let's just i'm gonna just let you guys know this is a five-star read okay but <laughs> i was a little bit analytical and decided to go with a 4.75 star rating I'm trying to be more critical with my reads but it is a five star read i just was a little a little bit more critical i guess because i had really high expectations so i am going to reread it in physical form um let me just say this book is freaking massive um is it massive or was i imagining no it's almost 400 pages not that bad maybe it was the other book that i read that was like 400 pages i don't know whatever i don't even know what i'm talking about but daughter of rome by miss tessa afshar this is her eighth novel um the fourth book in her sort of new testament i'm calling it a series but it's really not a series but her fourth book in her new testament kind of realm she has four old testament and now four new testament um and she has this one and this one is sort of a biblical fiction retelling well <laughs> I don't want to call it a retelling. Um, so it's kind of like biblical fiction on the story of Priscilla and Aquila. <laughs> I got so many feels from this book. Let me just say, if you enjoyed Pearl in the Sand by Tessa Abshar, if you enjoyed Harvest of Rubies by Tessa Abshar, if you enjoyed Bread of Angels, I think it is, by Miss Tessa Abshar, you'll, you'll kind of like this because it kind of, it kind of blends the three together um just a little bit my only gripe was paul in this book um there was two well three things but i'll talk about that in my wrap-up um no i did a wrap-up you can just click the eye on the screen to go to my december wrap-up and you'll see my thoughts like what i was thinking but if you want to see my reading vlog like i said click the eye on the screen to go watch the actual reading vlog um i also have a what is it a book to look makeup discussion on that you can click here to go see part one um it is broken up into two parts because i'm actually doing like my actual makeup while discussing the book and the characters and stuff and my thoughts and just ugh, everything was <sighs> feels just feels okay just all the feels in the world but we have this beauty and <sighs> let, let me just say i read all three of my most anticipated biblical fiction reads for well christian fiction reads for 2020 like I also have copies of my other most anticipated ones, which I have to do, like, reading vlogs for, of course. But, <sighs> this is amazing. Um, so I'm going to read the back of it to you guys. So it says, a woman with a devastating secret, a man bent on proving his worth, a chance encounter that catapults them into the heart of history. When the daughter of a prominent Roman general meets a disinherited Jewish immigrant, neither one can dream of God's plan to transform them into the most influential couple of the early church. Nor can they anticipate the mountains that would threaten to bury them. Their courtship, unwittingly shadowed by murder and betrayal, Priscilla and Aquila slowly work to build a community of believers while their lives grow increasingly complicated thanks to a shaggy dog, a mysterious runaway, and a ruthless foe desperate for love. But when they're banished from their home by a capricious emperor they must join forces with an unusual rabbi named paul and fight to turn treachery into redemption with impeccable research and vivid detail daughter of rome is both an emotive love story and an immersive journey through the first century rome and corinth reminding readers once again why debbie mccomber has said that no one brings the bible to life like tessa afshar and that is so true i i swoon for tessa okay i love tessa. biblical fiction favorite author just saying like love tessa 
I just want to, I just want to talk about this. So, I have an actual, like, sit-down review video coming of this book soon for you guys, but the feels were all there, like, all there. And it was just, it was amazing, okay? So, we have that. Um, there are a few more books that I want to include on this, um video i couldn't think for a second but i need to pop them up on my phone because i got them through netgalley and they're actually two bible studies um you guys know or hopefully you guys kind of sort of know i am a major fan of um moody publishers um as a whole i love their books i love their bible studies they have a ton of bible studies geared towards women i literally own them all right now there are three bible studies that are coming out um and i don't physically on them because obviously they're not out yet but we love moody publishers of course so i do want to highlight those for you guys real quick and i'm just pulling them up on netgalley and i am going to do a video all about netgalley because i know a lot of you guys are interested in what netgalley is and that's how i get a lot of e-arcs and how i request e-arcs for some of these books here that you guys see me um haul for you guys but we love moody publishers so i know for a fact that there are two that I have but I think there are three I'm just trying to pop them all out I, I should have did this at the beginning of the video but I honestly wasn't thinking I will include the images of course for you guys um but let me just quickly quickly I'm scrolling through their catalog because I own these already on my kindle but I want to actually read the synopsis for you guys um yep see this one too well see two of these already came out I think yeah, two of these already did come out. I just never mentioned them, so... Yeah. Um, but... I own that one already, okay. We're just, we're just making sure, making sure, okay, guys? Alright, so... Um... The first two already came out. So this first one is called Seeking Him. Um, I'll throw the cover up on the screen right here. It is by Nancy DeBoss Wolgameth and Tim Grimson. This is a 12-week Bible study. Um, experience the joy of personal revival. This one came out October 1st, 2019. Totally honestly forgot about it. Just saying. But um, I'll quickly just read the synopsis. It says, Revival isn't an emotional experience. It's a complete transformation. It can happen in your heart in your home, in your church, in your world. Restore your first love. Develop a heartfelt desire for God's word. Resolve conflicts, repair relationships, remove bitterness, fear, and worry. Refresh your spirit, renew your mind, re-energize your life. You can get back your passion and zeal for the Lord. Begin by seeking him. And then it's blurred by like Tony Evans, Jackie Hill, and a bunch of other people. So I have that, um, I haven't, studied it yet i have the ebook and the thing about it is i have the ebooks for these the e arcs but i don't really like my bible studies in ebook form i prefer them in physical form so i will be requesting this from the publishing company really soon to review so you'll see that um so we have that and like i said this came out last year october 1st i think the next one is keeping the faith by leanna davis and this one is a study in jude this is a eight week bible study i think the colors on this cover are like gorgeous but um this says an in-depth theologically rich study of the book of jude in a culture of subjectivity and speaking your truth we need to know how to lovingly fight for our biblically based truth-filled faith that's where jude comes in with a striking combination of humility genuine love doctrinal faithfulness and directness the biblical writer jude teaches you how to treasure the gifts of salvation the faith the church and most of all jesus christ by unpacking jude's meaning laden words we can learn to keep ourselves for christ even as christ is ably keeping us for himself you'll be amazed at how much you can learn as you walk verse by verse through the small epistle you'll learn why jude uses metaphors like waterless clouds and wild waves what was going on in jude's time theologically and why it matters why the warning passages can be a deep comfort to a believer to appreciate new dimensions of your belonging in christ get to know the oft neglected voice of jude be comforted and challenged in your faith and build community as you gather friends and study his word together in keeping the faith so this book has already been released it came out this month um it came out january 7 2020 so we have that book again i own the ebook 
don't want to read it because I need a physical copy, so I will be requesting this one from the publishing company as well soon. Again, Moody Publishers. I will leave Moody Publishers' website down below. And if you guys are interested in signing up for, like, their um, book review program, it's called MP Newsroom. I'll leave that down below as well because that's pretty much how I uh, acquire most of their Bible studies and books. But uh, we have that. And Moody Publishers does a lot of books by Tony Evans and um, by A.W. Tozer. So I really do recommend them. So we have that one. All right, where do I go next? Do I go with my favorite person or let's let's go by publication? Oh, they come on the same day. All right, so I'll save my favorite one for last. So this one here is one I actually never heard of. It wasn't until I requested the one I'm going to tell you guys next that I saw this and I was like, hmm, this looks interesting. And I've always, I'm, I'm the type that's very curious. Um, I don't care for history as like a school subject. <laughs> I hated history. I didn't care about Columbus and all that. I was only interested in history when we got to learn about the Egyptians and the Native Americans because I was interested in the lore and the mythology. But um, history class, as in like Columbus and all that, I don't care. Now, history as like a general subject, I do enjoy. I love learning the history of the Bible. Um, you know, learning about God and learning about the locations where people lived and learning about the traveling and the different religions at that time and just the different tribes. And I, I love, I, I love the history of the Bible. Okay. Is anybody like that? If not, I don't know. But, um, yeah. So sorry, my hair is just a little dead right now. I need to go and get it done. But, um, yeah, so this one is called Seven Feast. It is by Aaron Davis, and this one is also an eight-week Bible study. Cover is here. Um, this is Finding Christ in the Sacred Celebrations of the Old Testament. Um, this one comes out on June 2nd, 2020, and, you know, my birthday is on June 3rd, so this is definitely going to be a birthday gift to myself. Like, we need. Um, and you can get all of these on Amazon for really cheap. Um, I think I got the last one. I think I got the last two Bible studies from them on Amazon for like less than $10. And if you have Prime, it's a plus. If you don't have Prime, then of course you got to pay like the shipping. But if you have Amazon Prime, you can definitely get their Bible studies super cheap on um, Amazon. So check out Amazon. I'll leave Amazon links to them down below. But um, this one, let's read. This says, what's the story behind all those feasts? It's hard to know when you read about the Feast of Boths. I don't, I don't, Booths? Feast of Booths? I don't even know what that is. Why exactly it matters in your life. What in the world is the Feast of Trumpets supposed to be teaching you? And in this case, the text itself doesn't tell you. You need a resource, a guide that can help you understand the cultural significance and how these feasts relate to the rest of the Bible. That's exactly what Aaron Davis does in this new Bible study, Seven Feasts. She'll teach you the significance of these feasts and why God wanted his people to celebrate, how each of them point to Jesus and his work in redemption, why all of this matters for our lives today. You will discover that passages you once skimmed over are now rich and meaningful in your life today. And I find that as I'm re-going over the Old Testament, like I'm doing my reading plan, which you guys I mentioned, hopefully I mentioned, mentioned it and you, yeah, you, you would have seen it pay me no mind um i mentioned how i'm doing like just a general reading plan of reading through the old testament and right now i'm reading through exodus and um i'm finding that i'm enjoying going back and just reading the old testament um you know just reading it i'm not taking extensive study notes just i'm real reading it and highlighting and i'm finding that i'm understanding it a lot more because i'm a lot more mature in the word of god um you know when i first started out i could i, I was zilch lost didn't know what the heck was going on i was lost but as I'm, as I'm mature in the word of God, I'm finding that I'm really enjoying the Old Testament a lot more than I thought. So, we have that one. All right. And the final one also comes out on June 2nd, 2020. This is definitely a birthday gift. Like, if I don't get this one from the publishing company, The Life Review, I am buying this one for myself as a birthday gift. Like, hands down, because we know I love this author. Do I have to say who it is? Who's my favorite biblical fiction author, you guys? Let's say it together. Miss Tessa Afshar. She has a Bible study coming out, guys. Like, yeah, pause and think about that. There will be um, video sessions that go along that I know that she mentioned on her Instagram. So if you don't follow her on Instagram, follow Miss Tessa Afshar. You will regret it. You will not regret it. Um, follow her Instagram. But she will have video for that i think she started those videos last year for production for this year so like i'm super excited to get that as well 
fingers crossed but this is the way home by miss tessa afshar and this one is an six a six week i'm trying to see that number but i'm blind a, yeah a six week bible study on ruth and we all know that she has um oh my god grace in the field it's called in the field the gray shot y'all know i'm a little i'm sick so pay me no mind but we all know that she has her biblical fiction novel on ruth and boaz and naomi which is called in the field of grace now i had mixed feelings about in the field of grace um i still i think i gave it a five stars but i didn't really care for it too much but i think what i'm gonna do before this book comes out maybe in may towards the end of may i'm going to reread that book in preparation for this and when this comes out i will be restudying ruth and i might i might do that as like a free bible study that's not like scheduled for like the doi bible study but like bring you guys along with me as i personally restudy the book of ruth i love the book of ruth i study the book of ruth i think two or three times already between ruth esther and jonah i can study them thousands of times and in the gospel according to john i can study them thousands of times so we have that um and i'm sitting here rambling on about my favorite J just just look at this it's so cute but let's let's read the synopsis okay so it says ruth was a vulnerable widowed woman starting over in a foreign land naomi was returning to community for ruth she was setting herself up to be the odd one out her whole life what gave her the strength to do it could it be that she sensed all along her journey from Moab was a journey toward home? The story of Ruth is a remarkable tale of bravery, calling, and God's provision, and it will come to life in new ways as you dig deep in this six-week study. Tessa Afshar, award-winning author of Pearl in the Sand, <laughs> my favorite book from her, teaches you how to study the text, discern the meaning, pray through it, and live it out. She'll show you how to draw on the same strength and courage that Ruth did and accept God's invitation to new beginnings in your own life and again it's called the way home i'm like ecstatic i've never been ecstatic for like a bible study in my life but like i'm ecstatic for this one you guys i'm ecstatic for this like can't wait for this to come out um and let me just say this keep in mind even though these four books are bible studies what i find about moody publisher bible studies is that they're devotional based um they are definitely scripture heavy you definitely are getting into your bible and reading the word of god sometimes they have the scriptures actually written in your bible written out in the bible study but i still prefer to have my preferred translation out with me as i study um but it is also devotional based and it also has their personal experience so it's not going to be like an in-depth inductive bible study if you're looking for that that ain't what these moody um moody publisher bible studies are about they're more so about you um really being able to relate to these women as well as gain some insight and do the research and work yourself it is more devotional style and that you have um you do work five days a week like any other bible study five days a week of work um of course you have your week of rest two days of rest excuse me um now three of these have dvds that come with them i don't own the dvd sessions i'm thinking about getting my hands on them sometime soon but um I'm a major fan, okay? Major fan of the Bible studies. Now, the problem is that I started some of them, but never finished some of them. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I know a lot of you guys are interested in seeing my full, like, Bible study collection. I will go through that. <laughs> the problem is, I'm gonna be a little embarrassed because a lot of these I have not studied. And it's not because I don't want to, it's just because I haven't, I haven't made the effort, is what I'll say. Because a lot of the times is I'll start it. And you know how you start something, I mean, you do good, and then you miss a day, and then you like, all right, I'll start the next day and just do that with the next day. And then you miss two days, and you like, ooh, I'm three days behind. That's what happens, but I'm going to make an actual effort. Okay, guys, so it's another day um, after I made that initial uh, January book haul, and I got the other four books. They did come the next day. But if you guys have been following me on Instagram or in the Facebook group, you know that I lost my voice. My voice isn't 100% there. I probably shouldn't even be making videos, but I still want to make content. So hopefully I don't suffer later on with my voice. But um, I did get those other books. So I have two nonfiction and two fictional. All of these are from Rebel. Yes. Yeah, so the first one is Claim Your Crown by Tara Lynn St. Elaine. Um, it's forward, forwarded by Jamie Grace. Um, I know Jamie Grace has a YouTube channel here on YouTube, so I will find that and just click the on the screen to go to her channel. But, um, yeah, I don't know much about this. I just, honestly, when I saw it in the email, um, I thought the cover was absolutely stunning. So, 
I requested it. I love pink. Pink is me. Um, and I just, I love the little pink crown on the front and then like the foil. So pretty. But um, it's walking in confidence and worth as a daughter of the king. And it just really talks about um, Tara Lynn sharing her kingdom keys, soul bearing reflections, biblical encouragement, and a unique insight on popular culture and how we can push past adversity by putting the promises of God, putting on the promises of God, excuse me, um, dismantling the messages that feed insecurity, fears, doubts, and guilt, understanding God as a loving father and king, and walking purposely as an independent woman without the need of a prince. Um, so I think that's awesome. I'm excited to dive into this. I am a part of her sort of launch team for this book. Um, I think this book came out already. I'm not 100% so it'll be on screen, but I'm a part of her Facebook group for the launch of this. So yeah, um, but it's, it, it really is pretty. So we have this. The second book I got was Yes Sisters by Angelie, Angelia L. White. Um, with Erin Kelly Marshall. It's surrounding yourself with women who affirm, encourage, and challenge you. So, yeah. Um, oh, it's a black woman. All right. I, honestly, I didn't know. I thought the cover was cute. That's why I requested it. I'm, I'm doing better this year. I'm working on not requesting books that are pretty just because of the covers. I've received so many emails for book reviews, but I have turned down a bunch of them. And these are the first two of the year. So, I think I'm doing good. I received maybe over 10 emails. So, I'm doing pretty good on that. But, um... Yeah, it says a single no from someone close to us can crush our dreams. You can't, you'll never, you're kidding yourself. In contrast, a single yes can sustain our dreams despite the setbacks we're sure to encounter. Yes, you can. Yes, I'm here for you. So um, it's all about just understanding. It says find and cultivate yes sister relationships. Leverage the power of yes sisters and be a yes sister for someone else. So being that yes for someone when someone else is telling them no because a yes can go a long way. Um, but we have this and here is the author on the back. I think that is awesome. I'm excited. And it's floral print. We know we like flowers. So yes. All right. So then the next two are going to be fictional books. And these are both sort of out of my realm um so this first one i'm actually getting into more suspense you guys will see that in my wrap-up but um yeah this is collision of lies by tom threadgill um it is blurred by lynette eason and this sounds like it's gonna be good it is suspense um and i'll read on the back it says the case was tragic but it was an accident right Three years ago, a collision between a fast-moving freight train and a school bus full of kids led to devastation and grief on an unimaginable scale. But a fresh clue leads San Antonio police, police detective Amara Alvarez to the unlikely conclusion that one of the children may still be alive. If she's correct, everything law enforcement believes about the accident is a lie. With time running out, Amara must convince others and herself that despite all evidence to the contrary, the boy is alive, and she will do everything in her power to bring him home. A fresh voice in suspense, Tom Threadgill will have you questioning everything as you fly through the pages of this enthralling story. So I'm excited to dive into this. It sounds like it's going to be really suspenseful and mystery. That new book smell is amazing. Um, but yeah, 63. Oh my god, this book is not that long. Oh, is there a sequel to this story? I'm not sure. I'm trying to see how many chapters. There are 60 or something odd chapters. Oh, excuse me. 77 chapters. If you include the epilogue, that's 78. <gasps> 78 chapters, you guys pray for me. But I will probably have a reading blog for this just because it is full-on suspense without romantic um, aspects to it. So I may do this as a reader reading blog. So we have that. The last one is another book that I just, I stay away from the genre because I've always been turned off from it. Um, the genre, I mentioned this before when I first started getting into Christian and biblical fiction, that um, the only books that I knew of were Amish based. And um, it just turned me off because of what the Amish books that I was looking at. They had a young, like a bunch of younger girls, 10, 13, marrying these 40 year old men. And I just, I don't condone that. I don't condone age gap differences pretty much anywhere. Um, I just think it's like, why? Especially when you're a little teenager with a grown man. But I decided to give Amish novels a try again. So they had this up for um, review. It is the third book in a series, but I don't think they're... They're like companion series, so you don't need to read them in order. But it's The Deacon's Family, Two Steps Forward by Suzanne Woods Fisher. It's an Amish romance Um 
fingers crossed but the synopsis actually really sound good so that's why i decided to go with this um on the back it says sylvie needs a man of substance to help her run her business but what she gets is jimmy fisher back in broken stony ridge jimmy fisher has coasted through life as long as he could on charms good looks and deep set dimples they always worked just fine for him until they didn't his smile has no effect on the violet eyed beauty he met at the benton dent the one with the stunning horse she's offered him a job but nothing else the last thing sylvie Chirac king needs around rising star farm is a grown boy working for her especially her neighbor's her neighbor edith's son the woman holds a serious grudge against sylvie and hiring jimmy fisher will only fan the flames of edith's rancor but sylvie is desperate for help on the farm and jimmy understands horses like no one else while jimmy's lazy smile and teasing ways steal sylvie's heart Edith is working on a way to claim her land. Has Sylvie made another terrible mistake? So it sounds like it's going to be interesting. You have a neighbor who's just this, this I guess, a witch in a sense. Um, she doesn't like Sylvie, and Sylvie ends up hiring her son. Her son, just, you know, he's one of those pretty boys that uses his charms, um, but he can't charm his way into Sylvie's heart. So I think it's going to be interesting. Hopefully, have high hopes, but that is it. So back to the video. Turned out to be a little longer than I wanted it to be. Hopefully when I edit it down, it'll be maybe 30 minutes, 25 minutes, but there will be a part two. Um, I will be doing an unboxing for the Delilah box, which I am so excited about. So if you guys want to see that, stay tuned for the next video. Um, it might not be the next video, but it might be the video like after that. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching, liking, and subscribing. If you are not subscribed join the family join the sisterhood become a daughter of increase if you are a man watching my channel i thank you so much join the family and become a son of increase um i decided to launch son of increase as like a brother version of daughter of increase yeah um i do have some shirts i'm working on specifically for men soon so that is coming soon and um yeah that is it for this video so thank you guys for watching and all that great stuff Pray that I get better. Pray that I'm better by the time you you see this video, okay? Because your girl can't breathe. I can't. <laughs> Sip of coffee. I'm, I'm saying coffee. Tea. This is pumpkin spice tea. I do have iced coffee waiting for me in the, fr in the refrigerator, though. <laughs> can't wait. But that's it for this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.